Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Ready, steady, fall flat on your face. This was candidate Szymon Hołownia's start to the race for the presidency. In his first election campaign appearance, Hołownia made an ill-judged reference to the Smolensk disaster. After a wave of harsh criticism, Hołownia was forced to apologize. According to some commentators, this shows that the role of the independent candidate, which Hołownia tried to play, has ended in total failure. Keep straight, we will fight for every tree, not only for one. After the storm which erupted because of an election spot of Szymon Hołownia, the presidential candidate backed off and apologized. At the same time, he insisted in his published statement that he did not see the suggestive reference to the smallest disaster. Earlier, he was explaining that he would never think to check the particular variety of trees shown on the election spot. His convoluted explanations were not received well by MPs across party lines. You seriously sum up the tragic death of 96 people with a paper plane and a 5 for one tree? Somebody is trying to push hard for this candidate who frankly does not offer anything to the Polish voters, this election spot is the proof. I am not even talking about that candidate's election team's responsibility, but look at the moral and political responsibility of the candidate himself. Yes, we know that he is working together with his team, but in this case, heads should roll immediately. The presidential election campaign has just started. The newest poll by Social Changes is presenting the run of election pairs, assuming that none of the candidates wins in the first round. Incumbent candidate Andrzej Duda is predicted to win with Małgorzata Kidawa Bońska 47 to 40 percent, similarly with Szymon Hołownia 46 to 38 percent, and exactly the same percentage prediction wins with Władysław Kosiniak Kamesz. The poll predicts that the incumbent Andrzej Duda will win with Robert Biedroń 48 to 37 percent. The election is scheduled for Sunday, May 10th, and if none of the candidates reaches more than 50 percent of the votes, the run of election day is to be Sunday, May 24th. Canadian citizen Steve V had his sentence for raping and bludgeoning to death a three-year-old child reduced from 25 to 15 years of imprisonment by the Court of Appeal in Woodge. The chairman of the panel of judges, Schiefstoff Eichstadt, ruled that the original 25-year prison sentence was too harsh. Minister of Justice and Prosecutor General Zbigniew Zboro announced that a further appeal against this ruling, which he described as scandalous. President Andrzej Duda also criticised the ruling. Yesterday, the court commuted the sentence for raping and bludgeoning to death a three-year-old child. The reasoning is astonishing. There should be no tolerance for these kinds of degenerates. The children have to be strictly protected. To be honest, the verdict is shocking. This innocent, poor little child was raped and bludgeoned to death. I have a description of this tragedy right here. A man struck the child with a blunt tool. The child had many injuries all over its body. The inside of the body of the child was torn apart. The judge's words are unbelievable. I'm glad that you said the name of this judge because we should say judges' names out loud. They should take responsibility for their actions and decisions. In my opinion, this verdict is scandalous. It was the murder of a child, but in the judge's opinion, it wasn't a murder. It was just a bludgeoning to death. So according to the judge, it was just a bludgeoning to death. Yes, even if it was only a cruel rape, the man should get a life sentence. He's an adult. He consciously raped a little child. Witold Kieżun, economics professor and veteran of the Polish military underground during the Second World War, turns 98 today. A picture taken of him during the 1944 Warsaw Uprising remains one of the most iconic photos of the 63-day-long Polish uprising against the German army. All of us at Poland Daily wish you a very happy birthday, Professor. Henryk Jerzy Szczęczniewski, who was imprisoned in the German concentration camp in Majdanek for nine months, sent messages to a member of the Polish underground outside on little pieces of paper known as Gripsy. The modern Rekhide archive recently acquired these fascinating historical records. This unique testimony of German crimes at the camp, as well as their everyday life and the exhausting work of Majdanek's prisoners, were described on these small messages given to the modern records archive. They describe the everyday life of prisoners, repression, murders and also who was held there. These several hundred pages written and rewritten at the camp were sent outside the Lublin concentration camp. Knowing the camp reality from my own experience, I'm still amazed that prisoners were able to get materials to write the grips under these conditions. According to the co-author of a book on the grips from Majdanek, Henryk Szczęśniewski was an extraordinary person.
uratował życie. He saved the lives of many people by sending grips of old names. The people mentioned in them got help from the Polish underground. You can read them as moral journals of a Polish officer imprisoned in the camp, but they were also simply beautiful and poetic, even though very tragic. They describe the moral problems of the people inside the camp and are of religious and universal character. Henryk Jan Szczęśniewski was a member of the resistance inside the camp in Majdanek. For nine months he sent messages to members of the Polish underground outside. After the war he emigrated to France where he organized Polish scouting abroad. As had been expected, United States President Donald Trump was acquitted yesterday by the Senate of the impeachment charges against him. The voting in the Senate followed party lines, with only one Republican, Mitt Romney, voting with the di Democrat minority in favor of impeachment. Republican figures, including Trump himself, said Romney was a sore loser. He was a presidential candidate in 2012 and a secret Democrat. In the vote on the first article of impeachment, 48 senators found the president guilty of abuse of power, with 52 senators voting to acquit. One Republican, Mitch Romney of Utah, broke party lines and sided with Democrats in voting guilty on the first article. The allegations made in the articles of impeachment are very serious. As a senator juror, I swore an oath before God to exercise impartial justice. I am profoundly religious. My faith is at the heart of who I am. I take an oath before God as enormously consequential. I knew from the outset that being tasked with judging the president, the leader of my own party, would be the most difficult decision I have ever faced. I was not wrong. They thought this was a great idea, and at least for the short term, it has been a colossal political mistake. Well, I was surprised and disappointed, but I still think that we had great uh, teamwork on this, and I think we're in a good position going into our Senate races and the presidential race with regard to this issue. There may be plenty of other issues between now and November, but I think we're in pretty good shape right now. This is clearly not a happy day for the nation or the Senate. The Senate turned its back on the truth on a fair trial, on doing what the Founding Fathers would have wanted us to do. But Democrats walked out of the Senate chamber with their heads held high because we sought the truth, we did everything we could to get the truth, the American people believed that and knew we were fighting for the truth and know it to this day. Truth, there's a giant asterisk next to the president's acquittal. The asterisk says he was acquitted without facts, he was acquitted without a fair trial, and it means that his acquittal is virtually valueless. Donald Trump became the third president to be impeached by the House and acquitted in a Senate trial. He now becomes the first president to run for re-election after having been impeached. President of the United States, is not guilty as charged in the first article of impeachment. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business, and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.